It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushar, Bashim, Archak, Wadash. The ones to the elder apostles and bishops of the great Muslim who were well, peace, blessings, and salutations. Until the old elect tabernacle of David scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And this is a story out of uh, Daytona Beach. And it's making uh, you know, national headlines where you got a woman shoot her terminally ill husband at the hospital. And you know this had to have been a very severe, extreme case of illness for this man to, uh, you know, instruct his wife to carry out that act, you know, for him. You know, the torment must have been that, that severe. And, uh, you know, that's a terrible thing. You know, it's a terrible way to go. All right. Um, when you think about it, you know, and, and this is just, uh, you know, me coming from the perspective of what the scriptures say. When illness becomes that unbearable, you it's like you want to check out. You you want somebody to do the deeds for you. You know, and um, the scriptures say this, which I already have pulled up. Sirach 30, verse 17. I should actually start at um, 14. It says, better is the poor being sound and strong of con constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. All right, because, you know, what good is those riches when you can't even enjoy it because most of your money is uh, <laughs> covering, you know, medical expenses. The hospital visits you you suffering in pain you can't really go out and do the things that you would normally do you know that's why we always stress you know to uh you know keep a sound body you know eat the right foods all right you know leave that trash alone if you can all right exercise when you need to because in these bodies, man, it's just, it's, it's, it, yes, yeah, it's, it's terrible, man. These are poor, wretched bodies. These are vile bodies. They're weak. It's filled with uh, infirmity. It says, health and good, a state of body are above all gold and a strong body above infinite wealth. There is no riches above a sound body. All right. And what does it mean to be sound? It means to basically be whole. All right, to be well. Let's see if I can uh, search it up. There's multiple definitions for it. But we know in the scriptures, you know, something that's sound is something that's uh, whole. Like when Yahweh Shai said, um, they who they who be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. You know? Uh sound right here says in good condition, not damaged, injured, or diseased. You know, so you're basically you're healthy. You know, you got energy, you're not in pain, you know, you have your your wits. You got certain illnesses that, you know, once you receive it, you know, there's no cure. There's no, there's no ease. What does it mean to be diseased? It means that your body is, 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 uh, is not at ease. It's diseased. You know, the Apostle Bard, you know, always uh, brings that out. You know, like, for example, dementia, we know that that's a, uh, Something that, you know, normally you get when you get older. It's a disease that just, it, it, it happens. And, you know, you lose your uh, mental faculties. You know, your, the loss of your intellectual functioning. You know, your, your thinking starts to change. Personality starts to change. That's, that's pretty much a disease of the brain. So that's a terminal illness. 
right? And that's, uh, you know, that's mental torment. The, the, the disease of the brain, that's, that's, that's torment. It's better, it's better to basically die than to, you know, live a life in that estate. So, continuing on, it says, there is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart. And we know that the heart is talking about the mind from the Hebrew word lab, which means mind. All right. And, and I think there's a scripture in um, Sirach, the 25th or 26th chapter, where it says, give me neither, give me any plague, but the plague of the heart, the plague of the mind. You know, somebody that's mentally ill, all right, they suffer from dementia or they're schizophrenic. Basically, you're being tormented with, with uh, spirits. There's basically an evil angel that's tormenting you. And living with that is worse than death itself. When Yahweh Shai said, fear not him that can only kill the body, but cannot uh, kill the soul, but rather fear him that could destroy both the body and soul in hell. And hell is a, is a, is a condition. All right. Being in a, in, in a state of mental illness, that's a condition of misery. That's hell. Fear the Lord who can give you over to that. That's a very fearful thing. All right. A person putting you to death, that's, you just go, after that, you just transition. You out of the body, you're no longer dealing with that torment. You're free from it. And, you know, that's what I believe happened in this situation where his husband here, he was in so much uh, misery, you know, from whatever illness he was suffering from, that it was that severe that he wanted his own wife to take him out of his misery. Right at the hospital. And, you know, that wasn't right, you know, for her to do it, but you understand why she would have done it, you know, pretty much released him from, from the hell. But if he, so far, I don't, you know, as far as this story is concerned, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, what nationality, uh, you know, these, these people are, you know, what nationality the husband was, but if they're, if they're Edomites, they got tor they got torment along the way. You know, they they gonna get a you know, you go to the spiritual realm, you're gonna get a breather for a little bit, <laughs> right? But then you're gonna have to come back down. And and and, and you're gonna have to go through what we we what, what we went through. You're gonna have to drink of that cup. So they're gonna be in hell. They're like it, when, that parable of Lazarus and the rich man. In hell, he lifted up his eyes in torment. The torment ain't going to be him literally standing in uh, flames of fire and he's going to want somebody to, to, you know, dip their finger in some water and, 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 and make a drip fall on his tongue so he can cool himself. No. He's going to be in, 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 in a state of, of misery. He's going to be in sorrow because he's going to be under that curse. All right. You're gonna be under the Israelites, and you're gonna you you're gonna receive vengeance. That's worse than death. That's, this is why Jake was tossing them. They was throwing themselves off of the boat when they were on when when the, when Esau was bringing Jake on them on them slave ships over here. It was the, it was the, it was the mental torment that they suffered, being brought all the way away from their home, knowing that they'll never see home again, you know, knowing that their children are somewhere, you know, getting ill-treated, being uh, treated uh, like they're, like they're not human, being dehumanized. So some of the slaves said, fuck it, man, I'd rather die. And they freed themselves jumping into that, to the water. You know? So yeah, man, this is uh, hey man, the Most High is terrible like that, man. This is a fearful thing. The Lord can plague you with something unbearable, man. 
Like when he tormented um and Tiger's Epiphanies, you know, he, he gave him a, a, such a severe plague that he was willing to humble himself and even convert. You know, I'll I'll practice, you know, your religion. I'll I'll become a Jew. I'll restore everything that I that I took. The Lord wasn't having that. <laughs> You know, and that dude, he 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 died a very painful, agonizing death. He he he, he was starting to rot from the inside out. He was leaving a, a a bad, unbearable smell. That 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 process is worse than death itself. All right, so that's why it says death is better than a bitter life or a continual sickness. And there's no telling what diet this dude had that, you know, caused him to contract this disease, whatever, you know, illness he had, <laughs> you know, but that's why, you know, you got to eat right, eat right and exercise. The, 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 the American diet consists of nothing but poison, chemicals, genetically modified organisms that don't break down in the body, you know. Clogs up your arteries, gives you um, you know, high blood pressure. People got a lot of heart uh, problems, got a lot of cancers from all this processed uh, food. Then they taking medication that's jacking them up even further. So this had to have been real bad, man. And he said, hey, <laughs> please do do me a favor. You know, that's 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 terrible. All right, let me. Uh... Let me jump down. In verse 25, it says a cheerful and good heart will have care of his meat and diet. You know, so you you definitely gotta care for what you're putting in your in your in your body, man. Especially for Israelites, because you know we're the temple of the Most High. If you defile His temple, He said He will destroy you. You know, and you know, the Lord gave us you know a set of uh, rules. You know, He gave us dietary laws. And if we didn't abide by the laws, it came with consequences. One of those consequences being that the Lord will plague you with, with disease. Um, let me see. Uh, let me just go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 and... Yeah, Deuteronomy 28, verse 59, it says, Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance and sore sickness, and of long continuance, like a, a chronic illness. All right, something that can't really be uh, treated, it can't really be cured. I mean, there there is uh, actual herbs out there that do cure a lot of these diseases, but a lot of people don't know about that. They don't understand that the Lord created medicines in the earth. Because you got, you know, people in this world rely upon these uh, uh, positions of no value. You know, they just here to administer drugs, uh, which is basically witchcraft, and they get paid off of it feeding you chemicals and, and causing even worse problems. But ultimately, when you get a uh, disease, that's basically the Lord, you know, troubling you with an evil spirit. And the Lord can pretty much choose whether you want to take that evil spirit off of you or not and, and cure you. 
you know, we we know that you know it's through you know prayer and using the medicines of the earth that can help with that. But this world relies upon the beast and his image. <laughs> so this is what they you know get. All right, it talks about you know honoring physician. Let me go there real quick. And that shows you right there that hospitals are not really there to cure you. They're not, they're, isn't, that's not what it's for, man. It's just a storehouse of, of death. And they, you know, putting all type of, you know, chemicals and drugs in you, man. And it might, you know, prolong your stay, but it's just dragging you out. And, and, and you're deteriorating in the process. You know, so this is why brothers don't mess with them hospitals, man. It's a death warehouse. All right, uh, Sirach 38 and 1, it says, Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which you have, which you may have of him, for the Lord have created him. For the most I, just like your for of the Most High come of healing, and he shall receive honor of the king. For the Most High is the one that heals. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head, and in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration. The Lord have created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. Okay? You know, so, yeah, you're not going to abhor it. You know? And herbs, you know, they're not meant to be the most tasty you know, thing you you eat, you know, a lot of it is going to be actually bitter, but bitter is good for you. So, hey, you know, we, we deal with it, but your body needs that balance. Now, if there's some mental thing, then hey, you, <laughs> I don't, I don't think there's a herb you could take for that. You get mentally uh, tormented. That's the Lord just judging you, man, for whatever reason. You got an evil angel right at your at your side, you know. And I, I I definitely wouldn't want that, you know. Another another, another torment that's that's uh worse than uh, death is a uh, famine. The scriptures tell you how um is is better to basically uh be slain with the sword. Than to die of a uh, hunger. A person that's starving and and haven't eaten in a week or two weeks, you barely have energy to 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 crawl on your crawl on your arms, man, and 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 legs. Living like that, that's worse than than, than the process of death itself. It's at least in, in death, you you're released from those troubles okay so yeah man it's horrible but at the same time hey you know judgment is going out it's a, it's, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living power and uh he pretty much got taken out by the sword you know after dealing with you know Whatever plague the Lord plagued him with. All right. And, and it's such for the wife, because now they're gonna it's, it's even though it may have been a favor for him, but that's still murder. Technically. So, you know, she pretty much her life is gone too now. So terrible all around, man. Read some of these comments. I feel so much sadness for this woman. I, I'm sorry her husband was in that much pain that he asked his wife to do a hard thing like that. Mm. My heart is breaking for this woman. I know what it's like to watch someone you love slowly suffer and dying. They had probably talked about how he didn't want to live past a certain progression point of his illness. 
She wanted to stop his misery. She's probably barricaded himself in with them to mourn him and say goodbye. Well, yeah, you know. But whatever he did in his past life or even in his life, it warranted that type of judgment. All right, the Lord plagued the hell out of him. He was diseased. And, you know, that's what happened. All right. Let me, let me see some real quick. I think there's a scripture in Deuteronomy 7, if I'm not mistaken. Every sickness, every plague, which is not written in the book of the law. Man, that's Jake. Hey, Jake. <laughs> Jake be getting tore up by these diseases, man. They be wanting to die. And that's why they don't be wanting to get that old. Jake die early. You know, then to live a long time like that. Uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 15. Like, for example, my my um, my grandfather, man, my father's father, you know, he he caught a stroke, you know, um at a at a certain time. He was you I mean he was uh he was like mid age, he was probably in his fifties, I think, by the time that happened. So he it, he was disabled. He couldn't uh, do much anymore. The mind wasn't the same anymore. So he had to be taken care of by my grandmother. You know. Then you know he's on medications. Then he's in and out of hospital. He had more episodes. Ended up catching more strokes later down the line, and it just made him worse and worse. To the point where he, you know, he finally succumbed. But for years, you know, he had to deal with that, and my grandmother had to deal with, you know, having to care for him. Expensive medical bills. But once he was finally gone, you know, my grandmother, you know, I'm pretty sure she grieved, but she was also relieved at the same time because he didn't, he didn't have to suffer anymore. You know, uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 7 and 15 says, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, or will lay them upon all them that hate thee. You know, like these Edomites, you know, which are our enemies, you know, a lot of them, you know, they're getting jacked up. All right, they're, they're getting diseased, they're getting plagued. A lot of them on drugs, you know, overdoses. You know, you go through them hospitals, you see it's a lot of them in there. So that's just the beginning of the Lord putting these devils under that curse. So, yeah, man. So, and this, and, and, you know, knowing what these devils are trying to do now, you know, they're, they're planning for the next, you know, pandemic, you know, phase three or whatever, whatever it's going to be. And they're going to, you know, administer more uh, death serum. And, uh, you know, all it is is just um, administer more administration or administering of, of poison that's going to lead and cause more diseases in, in your body. Whether it deal with the heart or whether it deals with even your mind, which is why you shouldn't be dealing with it. But it tells you that these people are going to be deceived by, by, by the sorceries. That's in uh, Revelation 18, I believe, verse 23. Should be, they're going to be deceived by the, the sorcery. Because all these drugs are doing is just Prolonging your, your your illnesses, man. Until you finally drop. So, yeah, man, I'm not gonna make this uh super long, but I definitely want to do a, a response video to this uh, story here. You know, and these people they they're feeling all, you know, bad for him, but really he's he's actually. <laughs> 
he's actually been given a break by, you know, now now he's in the spiritual realm. I wouldn't feel bad for him at all. He's actually straight right now. All right. He's 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 actually released. Even though if he's a Edomite, I don't know, like I said, I don't know what nationality he was. You know, if these were Jake's, then hey, he's good. And uh he's gonna come back in his right mind in in, in, the, in the kingdom. All right. And you know, these bodies that we have now, that's gonna be no more. Like when we go into the spiritual realm, you know, there's a body made in that's in the heavens made without hands. That's eternal. You go into your celestial uh, body. And then in the kingdom, we're going to be extraterrestrial. There's going to be no more pain, no more uh, misery. All right, no more sorrow. That's Revelation 21, verse what, 4. And we're not going to be under these chains of darkness, man. That's subject to, to infirmity, to, to weakness to pain, to, to, you know, illness. We're going to be able to live forever, man, the everlasting tabernacles. And that's what we're waiting for. We're, we're waiting to adopt, you know, that's the, that's the, the earnest expectation, you know, it's, it's, it's to, you know, shed these bodies and, and become, you know, the sons of God, man, immortals. There'll be no more uh, suffering, all right? Because this world right now, under this uh, under this current setup, under this current management, this current rule, this shit is all bad. Uh, Second Ezra four, and this is why we we're prisoners of hope. You know, we're we're expecting for the Lord to to change this. Uh, Second Ezra uh, four and Yeah, 26, it says, Then answered he me and said, The more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel. For the world hasteth fast to pass away. And it is, is, is like it says in Isaiah, the 24th chapter, because the earth is uh, is, is suffering under the inhabitants thereof. It's, it's defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Mainly the rulers. Because they have changed the laws, the ordinances. And broken the everlasting uh, covenant, so they they helped to destroy the world by by not keeping the laws, statutes that the Lord gave to govern and and and, and rule the world. That's why it's suffering. That's why people are suffering. The animals are suffering. Everything. That's why we need a new world, a new heaven, and a new earth. Esau got to get his taken away from him because he does not know how to rule. It says, and cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. But this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities. All right. What are infirmities? Physical or mental weakness. All right. Everything is just growing more and more feeble. Uh, feeble. Okay. Decrepitude, disability, impairment, illness, sickness, instability, ailment, disease. Yeah, man, it's, it's filled with it. This is why we need a new heaven and a new earth. All right. So, yeah, man, I, I just want to uh, go into that and Lord willing, you know, this was edifying. And hey, you know, don't get me wrong. It's not good to, you know, commit suicide or, you know, none of it, you know, really at the end of the day, you know, these people, they, they suffer for what sins that they've done in their body and then they go down into the grave. So basically it was just judgment. Okay. And I think there's a scripture in Wisdom of Solomon where it says, seek not death in, you know, um, Seek not death in the era of your life. You know, talking about basically doing it with your own hands. You know, the Lord is going to, if it's your time, the Lord's going to take you. He's going to take you. All right. When it's your time, it's your time. 
So, yeah, man. And with that, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Shai. And to the next lesson, Shalom.